Before we start, can we get this video to 1000 likes? Please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. The doorbell rang and the boy's mother ran to open the front door. But first, he decided to look out the window. A few hours ago, he went to visit a friend, but came back too late. Maternal instincts felt that something was wrong. He took a closer look and he was stunned. This boy can sometimes turn the whole family's life upside down. Becca, 35, spends almost all of her time at home. He only goes out first at night and then doesn't go out for long. Things are not always like this. Three years ago, he suffered from acute allergies that resulted in a tumor in his throat. As a result, he began to live a reclusive lifestyle, fearing attacks in the streets. Becca barely left the house between March and November. From this lifestyle, he will only get worse. Unable to lead a normal life, he fell into depression. Treatment didn't help much, and she couldn't see any hope. But one day his six-year-old son Dunny does something that changes everything dramatically. Dunny goes to visit his friend Eric, but not before he decides to kiss his mom goodbye. He knocked on his bedroom door, but his mother didn't answer. Sorry, honey, I have allergies, he told her from the door. You can still play when you are out. When you come back for dinner, don't forget to close the front door behind you. Downey sighed and walked to the door. How much he wished his mother had fun and fun again. But he doesn't know what to do. Until something special happened that night, two hours passed and Becca heard the doorbell, just beginning to recover from another bout of hay fever. He felt so bad and just wanted to do nothing in bed. Therefore, she doesn't like open places. He even learned to ignore him when the doorbell rang. But the doorbell keeps ringing. Ten minutes later, Becca got a little bored. Apparently someone didn't want to understand what was expected of him, just turned around and walked away. He worked up his strength and fell downstairs. Every step is a headache. The doorbell kept ringing. He walked to the window, opened the curtains, and looked at who was at the door. It was the strange look on Downey's face. Becca immediately realizes that something is wrong with her son. He looked around uneasily. What are you doing back so early? He opened the door and asked, but the boy didn't answer a word, so he took something from behind and handed it to him. Then he looked at him with wide eyes, smiled softly, and said, Mom, I have something to give you. For two weeks, Becca and her children were outside Anne's friend Eric's house. For the first time in three months, Becca can go everywhere. The door was opened by Eric's dad. But before he could say a word, Becca hugged him tightly and said, Thank you, you saved my life. Eric's father is a biomedical expert and experimentalist. Most importantly, he is interested in phytoplankton. This tiny plant, found under the sea, has powerful medicinal properties. Regardless, Eric's dad believed it. But very few people believed him. Where he works, plants are not seriously considered as medicines. But when Downey told him about his mom's allergies, he suggested she try scaring phytoplankton. The results surprised everyone. The day Dunny came home earlier than usual, Becca noticed that he had a can in his hand. He explained that it was Eric's dad who told him that he was a doctor. Becca decided to try because nothing helped her. He figured he had nothing to lose. But after a few days, the allergic symptoms were greatly reduced and then almost disappeared completely. This is a true miracle recipe. All thanks to his brave boy who proved that asking for help is normal. Let's move on to the next story. Eight-year-old Jonah finally sees the bright sun again. After weeks of non-stop rain, he was able to take his new scooter outside. Now he'll be able to enjoy his new toy for the first time since he received it as a birthday present. Unfortunately, something very strange awaits him. He put on his naughty little helmet and got on his scooter. The sidewalk in front of his house is the perfect place to visit with his new toy. The wheels of the scooters turn smoothly on the elegant floor tiles, which are several meters long. Everything was going well until I suddenly heard a scream. Her neighbor Amy saw Jonah playing and came out with a very mysterious look. She stood by the sidewalk, watching him closely. Suddenly, Jonah stopped, almost fell off his scooter amidst the women's screams. The neighbor approached the boy with a disturbed expression. Then she did something that Jonah will never forget in his life. This is a very strange situation. Jonah heard someone screaming, 
but didn't know who it was at first. This little rascal is concentrating on accelerating as fast as he can on his scooter. But as soon as he heard the screaming, he lost his balance and could barely stop. Jonah looked to his right in the direction of the voice. His neighbor saw Amy running towards him. He rubbed his eyes to see if he was dreaming. Up to Jonah with a serious expression on her face. Not because she's about to fall, but because her neighbors don't know Amy very well. In fact, they had never communicated directly before. Sometimes he saw her talking to her father, Theo, and that was all. The neighbors didn't even want to look at Jonathan when he was brought out. Her father always referred to her as a strange woman. Leave her alone. She's a bit of a weird woman, she'd say. Theo didn't quite understand the strangeness of this woman either. But Jonah will soon find out. Jonah backed away slightly when he saw Amy running towards him. For some reason, he was a little scared. His father was not at home. He went to the market. If his neighbors did something, what would he do alone? He wished his father could come home as soon as possible so that he wouldn't have to be alone with Amy for too long. Jonah, his neighbor shouted, just meters away from the boy. He looks very angry. Jonah noticed right away. He was ready for what was to come. Amy stopped in front of the boy. They looked into each other's eyes. It was a very strange encounter until the nervous expression of the neighbor gradually changed to a cautious smile. Can you drive your scooter through here again? He asked the little boy. Come on, I noticed something. The boy didn't understand what was going on, but was glad the neighbor wasn't angry. He thought something worse was going to happen. At the neighbor's request, he took his scooter and jogged back and forth across the concrete in the front yard. Amy watched him carefully. Okay, stop. Amy yelled to Jonah, who was running around twice with her toy. A huge smile grew on his face. I knew it. She yelled, doing some sort of dance move on the floor Jonah had just passed in her blue shoes. Jonah didn't understand what the woman saw. Her father was quite right. She was a very strange woman. But what the boy doesn't know is that Amy's behavior isn't so weird after all, because she discovered something that would change everyone's lives forever. Where's your father? He asked Jonah. I have to talk to him right away. He hasn't come home yet, Jonah replied. His neighbors are impatient and unhappy. Will you call me as soon as Theo gets home? The situation is really important. Amy turned and ran towards her house. Jonah stared at her in bewilderment. He doesn't know what just happened. What would his neighbors say to his father? Did I do something wrong? He thought as he put the scooter back in the garage. He sat in the living room, waiting for his father to come home. When he heard the sound of a car, he immediately ran to his father, Dad. This weird neighbor was watching me while I was riding my scooter. He even asked me if I could run around a few laps and do some dance moves. He also said he wanted to talk to you when he got home. Theo couldn't believe his ears. The time has finally come, he said softly. What's that? Jonah asked his father. His father didn't answer, and he left the house, closing the door behind him. He stayed with the neighbor for over an hour. Jonah could hear the two of them talking through the living room window, but he didn't quite understand the words. An hour and a half later, his father returned with his neighbors. They sat on the couch and asked Jonah to sit too. What's going on, Dad? Why is our neighbor here? Why is he always staring at me? Jonah's father sighed heavily and began to speak. She's no ordinary neighbor. This woman is your surrogate mother. As you know, your father was lonely most of his life and I want to have children. I don't want children until I'm old. So how the neighbor decided to help me. You stayed in his womb for nine months after you were born. Then I asked him to keep this little secret until you were old enough to understand. But now the time has come. Take him out of my cutting off in life is a selfish act. After all, she's like your mother. He really wants to get to know you, and I understand that. Do you want to too? Jonah stood up from the sofa and looked carefully at the woman who had been a stranger before. First, the deep eyes, then the big smile. A smile like neighbor Amy's. Look, we have the same smile, Amy yelled, cradling her son in her arms. Since then, Jonah has played games with the neighbors every day. Amy and Theo are close friends again, and Jonah now has a friend and mother figure in his life. Amy is no longer the weirdo who lives next door. He is the hero who gave birth to him and raised him.